Today we are going to discuss about the inclusive education and role of ICTs in inclusive education. First we will see what is the concept of inclusive education. As you are aware, inclusive education is the revolutionary step uh, which has happened in the field of education. Really it was a revolution. Why it is said uh, to be a revolution? That is what we are going to see now. First we will see uh, the meaning of inclusive education. Inclusive education means that all students attend and are welcomed by their neighborhood schools in age appropriate regular classes and are supported to learn, contribute and participate in all aspects of the life of the school. Inclusive education is about how we develop and design our schools, classrooms, programs and activities so that all the students learn and participate together. Inclusive education is about ensuring access to quality education for all the students by effectively meeting their diverse needs in a way that is responsive, accepting, respectful and supportive. Students participate in the education program in a common learning environment with support to diminish and remove barriers and obstacles that may lead to exclusion. Inclusive education means that all children, no matter who they are, can learn together in the same school. This entails reaching out to all the learners and removing all the barriers that could limit participation and achievement. Inclusive education is carried out in a common learning environment that is an educational setting where students from different backgrounds and with different abilities learn together in an in inclusive environment. Common learning environments are used for the majority of the students regular instruction hours and may include classrooms, libraries, gymnasiums, performance theatres, music rooms, cafeterias, playgrounds and the local community. A common learning environment is not a place where students with the intellectual disabilities or other special needs learn in isolation from their peers. Now we will see what are the effective common learning environments. It enables each student to fully participate in the learning environment that is designed for all students and is shared with peers in the chosen educational settings. It provides a positive climate, it promotes a sense of belongingness and it ensures the students uh, progress towards appropriate personal, social, emotional and academic goals. Effective common learning environments are responsive to individual learning needs by providing sufficient levels of support and applying student-centered teaching practices and principles. Common learning environment is an inclusive environment where instruction is designed to be delivered to students of mixed ability and with their peer group in the community school while being responsive to the individual needs as a learner and used for the majority of the students regular instruction hours. Now we will see how we have reached to this revolutionary concept of inclusive education. What were, we, what were there prevailing before we reached into inclusive education? You know that inclusive education is all about including the children with special needs uh, with the children of uh, the, uh, the normal peers, right? So before we uh, started this practice, first they were not sent to the schools or the students or children with special needs were completely excluded. That is what the first practice uh, about uh, the education of children with special needs was. In exclusion practice, 
exclusion was occurred when students are denied access to education student uh, students with disabilities were not permitted to register and uh, to attend the school programs even when they were registering at least they were told not to come to school they were even uh, offered fake uh, that uh, the ch students or the officials will be coming to you at your homes and will be extending the support of education to you at your homes but it was never practiced and it was uh, socially it was really the denial of social rights of the children and even if uh, somewhere they were admitted to the schools or registered uh, to the mainstream of education uh, there were lots of conditions put on them uh, uh, conditions were uh, regarding their attendance regarding uh, the internals regarding the uh, performance in the minimum performance in the examinations etc sometimes students were registered but they told that they will receive their education from a teacher who will visit you at the home and so that uh, children uh, do not want to come to the schools now after exclusion when we thought of uh, giving education or extending the education to the people who are disabled i uh, used the term disabled very purposefully purposefully because uh, the when uh, we were having the practice of exclusion or segregation the uh, children with special needs were considered as totally disabled or having some in uh, potentials on them and seg in segregation practice segregation uh, occurs when students with disabilities are educated in separate environments classes or schools designed for the students with impairments or with a particular impairment and you, need, you see in segregation uh, practice even uh, some students uh, were uh, enrolled in the mainstream education but they were sent to the special classes so even if we had admitted them to, into school that was a uh, purely segregated practice if we had not allowed them to continue their education with their peers now when we come to the third practice of integration integration is placing persons with disabilities in existing mainstream education without changing the system of education delivery teachers peers policy makers infrastructure uh, conditions or status uh, the uh, education practices and process etc remained the same that means uh, in integrated practice of education people were simply admitted uh, in the mainstream education or the doors of our institutions were kept open for all categories of children without extending any further support and helps that is what happened even uh, the teaching community or even peers no attitudinal changes were there among them no special infrastructures uh, were provided now integration involves placing a student with a disability in a regular class but without any individualized supports and with a teacher who is unwilling or unable to meet the learning social or disability support needs of the child many people mistakenly call this as inclusion but unless the student receives the support needed it is not the inclusion actually it was still exclusion now we are coming to the revolutionary topic of inclusion after integration we uh, changed our attitude and thoughts regarding the education educational rights of the children uh, having uh, some special needs and we moved into onto the inclusion practice and in inclusive education practice it involves a transformation of the education system with uh, changes and modifications in content teaching method approaches structures strategies 
and review mechanisms in place. In an inclusive system, teachers are trained in init initial or pre-service education and ongoing professional development to respond to different learning styles and pres present lessons in different ways so that all students can learn. Resources are available to meet the individual needs of the students with disabilities such as modified curricula and adapted materials. And uh, we are not supposed to use the label disabled here when we come to the inclusion. Rather we are uh, admitted the social model of disability where uh, the student uh, students or children having uh, or uh, uh, requiring some special supports are never considered as a problematic rather we are in social model we accept that we have to change rather we ask the students or children to change now the curriculum adaptation is an ongoing dynamic process that modifies and adapts the prescribed program of studies to meet the learning requirements of a student with special needs. In integration practice, uh, we allowed the people to uh, join in the same school, the schools uh, where their uh, peers are studying. But we were very rigid in terms of curriculum, very rigid in terms of uh, t the teaching method and uh, infrastructure, policies, etc. But here, uh, we are adopting uh, the curriculum adaptation technique where the teachers, the schools, uh, the uh, authorities or policy makers are given freedom to be flex flexible so that even we don't want to compel the practice of edu uh, education what uh, their normal peers are doing on the students uh, uh, with uh, uh, special needs so that it enables uh, the teaching team to welcome learners of all abilities and ensures that every student is challenged to learn. Now we'll move on to the second uh, phase of this presentation where we will dis be discussing the ICT tools in inclusive classrooms. You know well that the ICT has become the key uh, role uh, in educational practices at least during this covid lockdown period the teachers who uh, even uh, the teachers who had a digital inertia are even uh, forced to uh, change their attitude and uh, widen their mind to learn further and so that ICT cannot be kept away from the uh, field of education that is a reality in inclusive education uh, it proposes all students uh, are provided with equitable access to education within the context of mainstream educational system and not in a segregated settings. So accessible ICTs have a major role to play in enabling educational authorities, educators, students and parents to move towards a more inclusive education system. However, its role as a communication aid, pedagogical tool and means of access to previously inaccessible learning materials is still in many countries only just beginning to be explored. Now we will understand the concept of accessible ICTs in detail. Accessible ICTs are the wide range of assistive and mainstream technologies and formats that can enable students with a disability to enjoy an inclusive education. Accessible ICTs includes assistive technology which can be defined as a piece of equipment, a product system, a hardware or a software or services that are used to increase, maintain or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. 
Now we will see the different types of accessible ICTs. There are three types of accessible ICTs. One is mainstream technologies and another one is accessible formats and the third one is assistive technologies. The mainstream technologies are uh, the devices such as computers that contains inbuilt accessibility features you might have seen different accessibility features on your computer and on your smartphones and even though we even uh, if uh, we do not use it uh, there are people who needs uh, those features really now when we come to the second one accessible formats uh, also known as uh, alternate formats are uh, uh, such as uh, accessible HTML, hypertext uh, markup uh, language, then DAISY uh, books, DAISY means digital accessible information system, DAISY books, but also include low tech formats such as Braille. Even Braille will come under accessible formats. Now, the third one, assistive technologies. They are such as hearing aids, screen readers, adaptive keyboards, etc. And assistive technologies is a piece of equipment, a product system, hardware, software or service that is used to increase, maintain or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. Now, UNESCO in its training guide, ICTs in education for people with special needs outlines three main roles for the use of accessible ICTs in education. Now we will see first one is compensation users and second one is uh, didactic users and third one is communication users. The comp uh, compensation users are the technical assistances that enables the active participants in traditional education activities such as reading or writing. Now, in didactic users are the general processes of using ICTs to pro transform approaches to education. Many ICTs can be used as a didactical tool to enable a more inclusive learning environment. Now, in communication users, technologies that can enable communication are, are used. Okay, they are often referred to as alternative and augmentative communication devices and strategies. Now, we'll move to the benefits of ICTs. In general, accessible ICTs are uh, enabling greater learner autonomy and accessible ICTs unlock hidden potential for those with communication difficulties. That's a reality even uh, we have felt many a time. It also enables students to demonstrate achievement in ways which might not be possible with traditional methods. It also enables a uh, task to be tailored uh, to suit individual skills and abilities. Now we shall uh, discuss about the benefits uh, offered by the use of ICTs in inclusive education for students. For students, computers can improve independent access for students to education and students with special education needs are able to accomplish tasks working at their own pace. Though, so the flexibility in pace is a great advantage of using e-learning or the use of ICTs in education. Now, if we come to the visually impaired student, using the internet can access information alongside their sighted peers. Students with profound and multiple learning difficulties can communicate more easily. Students using voice communication aids gain confidence and social credibility at school and in their communities. Increased ICT, confi increased ICT confidence among students motivate them to use the internet at homes 
for school work and leisure work. Now we shall discuss about the benefits for teachers by and uh, non-teaching staff by using ICT in an inclusive setup. It supports it supports reflection on professional practice via online communication. It gives improved skills to staff and a greater understanding of access technology used by students. Enhanced, it enhances professional development and the effectiveness of the use of ICT with students through collaboration with their peers. The materials already are in electronic form so that uh, like uh, in, uh, in the form of internet are more easy easily adapted into accessible resources such as large print or braille the materials which are made in digital format can be uh, converted into any other required formats very easily now what are the benefits of uh, Benef using ICT in an inclusive setup for students and take carers. Now, the use of voice communication aids younger ages, parents and carers to have higher expectations of children's sociability and potential level of participation. Now, what does it mean by assistive technology? We have many a time used the term assistive technology. Here, the te assistive technology is the technology which makes uh, it possible for a classroom to be enhanced with individual learning events, allowing instructors to provide greater flexibility and differentiation in instruction. Teachers can use technology to offer a variety of learning opportunities and approaches that engage, instruct and support special education students with a myriad of tactics designed to appeal to individual learners. No longer are students stuck in a classroom they don't understand trying to learn at a pace they can't keep up with or participate in. Now we will see the areas of improvement uh, by assistive technology. The areas where the improvement is a felt element by using the ICTs in uh, inclusive education are reading, writing, memory, listening, mathematical abilities, organization, building access, physical mobility, social interactions and athletic participation. I kindly request you all to imagine all these benefits in terms of both the normal students and students having some uh, special needs. Now, assistive technology for learning and in class activities how is it helping now assistive technology is uh, helping for learning and the classroom activities they are light signals touch screens screen readers screen magnifiers digital screen magnifiers then text to speech softwares and devices joysticks sip and puff system alternative keyboards, voice recognition softwares, braille embossers and refreshable braille displays. Now assistive technology for physical mobility in motor activities how assistive technology is helping the students. Now the ramps, uh, openers, uh, scooters, grab bars, wheelchairs, handheld GPS units, uh, automatic doors, wider doorways, adapted car seats, etc. are the result of technological uh, advancement. And these are the changes which are highly empowering and uh, highly improving the confidence among the children with special needs. 
now we shall uh, discuss uh, about the devices which the ICT devices which are helpful for the learners now you see uh, if we talk about the assistive devices we are having content delivery systems content generation and archiving systems uh, now if it is for education process okay now uh, braille system then pictorial communication and large printed uh, large prints okay all these are highly contributing to the needs of the children with special needs now in, uh, for rehabilitation or inclusion what are the technologies so the physiotherapy beauty care uh, call center or uh, uh, call centers are in offices uh, etc then uh, uh, if we are moving to the communication then there we have lots of uh, advancements in terms of communication uh, video conferencing devices are there uh, platforms are there even if a blind student is there uh, participating in a video conferencing if he, he can also be benefited by uh, listening to the uh, discussions going on there now if uh, one is physically uh, challenged and uh, in not in a condition to come to the classroom even uh, they, he can be uh, provided with education by using such kind of video conferencing or e-learning platforms now uh, voice commands are uh, descriptors large print are contributing to the communication now uh, for visually challenged uh, uh, how the technology is going to help now please understand that uh, the visually challenged can be uh, like uh, mildly uh, challenged and uh, profoundly challenged okay there will be uh, loss of vision in different degrees and uh, the blind people are otherwise called legally blind the completely blind people are given the uh, name uh, legally blind and others are partially blind or partially uh, challenged okay now for them for vi uh, smart canes actually the uh, major challenge faced by the visually uh, challenged uh, students and people are in uh, moving in their motion so since they are not having the vision they feel lots of obstacles are on their ways so the smart cane which will uh, have some uh, group of sensors okay and uh, it will give uh, it will give the user or the person uh, some alerts and notification when there are some obstacles ahead so smart canes uh, are highly enabling the uh, people to uh, do their works uh, without uh, much help by others now voice over systems uh, on smartphone and computers are there if we click on voice over system if we enable that feature on our smartphone or computer whatever where uh, is displayed or wherever we take the uh, cursor of the mouse uh, the it's, it will be read uh, by the system so even visually impaired people can understand what they are doing or where they are on their screen by simply listening to the uh, sound uh, or uh, description given by the system or uh, on voice over systems now braille touch uh, then audio books okay audio books uh, will be a great tool uh, for the people who are having visual uh, visual impairment or visual difficulties okay the books can be converted into the audio books very easily even if the teacher is not having the time uh, to con uh, to read and uh, record uh, the voice okay there are some tools which even converts text to voice so it will be very easy for converting the uh, traditional books uh, for helping our children into the uh, audio books now audio recorders and players are there like an ipod 